Hey darlings. So we're in the book of Mark. I'm reading chapter seven today, but I wanted to just quickly recap on yesterday's chapter, on chapter six, um, and especially to zone in on the part about John the Baptist, where we find out King um, King Herod had his, him beheaded. And I want to, for you to just reflect and ask yourself, out of each of the um, seeds sown from the parable of the sower. So when when we hear that either the Messiah is coming or Jesus is the Christ that we were looking for in the Old Testament, th there's different ways in which that seed can get planted. We obviously want that to be in fertile ground so it can grow and we can grow and understand and be more like him as we follow him through the word of God. Hey, prove your faith. And Lindsay Heim has joined. Hello, my darling. So we are, we're just reflecting on which um, of those is Herod. Is Herod the one that fell on stony ground where the, hey, Sean, um, comes and steals away the beautiful teaching? Uh, was the scene thrown amongst um, thorns and that just got ripped down. So just have a little uh, think about that for yourself and yeah, reflect on whether that seed is, is sown in fertile ground in your heart. Um, I'm going to continue reading from Mark 7. So here we go. Then the Pharisees, some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem now, when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all of the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups and pitchers, copper vessels and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? So again, they're trying to find fault with Jesus and his followers. The, the, the scribes and Pharisees, they're really educated, um, well-esteemed men in in the towns and the areas because they knew the Levitical law. That's the Old Testament law, the Jewish law that they hold um, so sacrament to that they are just, people will say, oh, that's, um, what's the word that people always say? Oh, you're being legalistic. So when someone sort of a modern day uh, follower of Christ might say to another Christian, um, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. And they'll say, oh, you're being too legalistic. You're being like the scribes and Pharisees. You're, you're looking at too many of these different laws. And it's true that with Jesus, his yoke is light. So the law was a lot of laws, a lot of uh, rituals and things that they had to do to keep themselves clean, not just physically, um, because that was that was a good thing to do. That was wise to do anyway, but mentally and spiritually. <clears throat> and under the new covenant, which is Jesus, there, his yoke is like, his is just much easier. If we just follow him, then we don't have to be so nitpicking over all of the laws. We have a new renewed desire to follow those laws and we're doing them more naturally and he's, he's cleansing us through. So this is what's going on. They're sort of saying, you're not keeping the laws, you're doing weird things. How come you can do it differently? And he answered, this is Jesus, and said to them, Well, did Isaiah the prophesy over you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things that you do. He said to them, all too well you reject the commandments of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, honour your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might receive from me is <clears throat> Corban, 
and that is a gift to God. Then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things that you do. So he's calling them out saying, you're not really understanding here the everyday sort of practicality. When he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone and understand. There is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him, but the things which come out of him. Those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Amazing. It is not what goes into our body through food, through whatever. It is what comes out of, out of us in from our heart. Our heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. I love in Matthew, there's uh, another verse that sort of says, woe to you, he's talking to the Pharisees and uh, scribes again, woe to you for you are like whitewashed tombs, which appear beautiful on the outside, but inside hold dead men's bones. And this is what he's he's saying to them. You're, you've got all this appearance of goodness and you know the law and you know it inside out, yet your heart is not for me. Your heart is far from me epic. When he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. And he said, what comes out of a man what comes out of a man that defiles him? Um, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. That's what... Um, Oh, yeah, someone is saying uh, Jesus is telling them what the purpose of the law was. It's love. Yes. So Jesus is saying to the Pharisees and, and the scribes just earlier on that that um, chapter here is it's not about keeping law. That's not the first thing. That is not the first thing that we need to think about. We need to think about, yes, just having love for God and then that love that we have for God gives us the strength to love others. Um, a, a Gentile shows her faith. From there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon and he entered a house and wanted no one to know it but he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit um, heard about him and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek and she kept asking him to cast out the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filed first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the tables must eat their crumbs. And then he said to her, for saying so, go your way, the demon has gone out of your daughter. The significance there is that she is... Um, not from, let me get this right, because she's Greek and she followed a different man-made religion, if you like, from that he's sort of saying, look, um, let the children be filled first. Let me, let me tend to, um, the, so, a Tyre and Sidon was a really horrific place that we're, that we're meant to, to understand as well. This really bad, bad place. People are doing lots of bad things there. And so Jesus is saying, no, let my children come to me first. But she knows who he is. And this is what he's asking throughout the book of Mark for you to consider. Who is he? Um, and so he doesn't want anyone to perish and doesn't want anyone to go without. Um, and because she understands where she is because of her culture, because of the area that she's, she's in, she still wants to honour God and says, yeah, but even the crumbs of the table, you know, just give me a crumb of, of you, basically. Um, and I know that I'll, 
that I will have this healing. And he's, he basically says, yes, for saying that, uh, you're, the demon's going out of the daughter. And when she came to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him, and he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, uh, Ephanatha, that is, that's the Aramaic, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was loosed and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely it was proclaimed. And they were astonished beyond all measure, saying he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Just on so many levels does this <laughs> does does this kind of hit me the the fact that for me personally two years ago when I had this supernatural experience and, and came to God it was like my ears had had sort of opened for the first time and I could hear swear words and blasphemy just it was just so vile to me it was so disgusting to me and I hadn't even heard I hadn't heard it in that way before and I used to swear I used to just say the oh my god or all that sort of stuff and I could no longer I couldn't it, it just I wasn't it was miraculous how that changed I remember um working somewhere last year and saying oh my gosh and they were just like Oh, Heather, you're so posh. And I was like, I just can't say that anymore. And it used to be every sentence, swear word every sentence, thinking I was so cool. Um, God really opened my ears to those those words and just how, you know, there is power in, in words. Of course there is. And there's power in this word like no other. Um, and it, I, I'm still in awe of that. And I will always be in awe of that. Um, just a phenomenal, to me, to me that was just a, such a huge, phenomenal, quick, overnight change. Um, I can't, I, I had to just get rid of Netflix, watch all these movies and TV shows that I was sort of hooked on, had to go because I could not. I actually spent one night writing down the amount of times there would be sort of a blasphemy. Um, and it worked out to be, Every 1.21 minutes, there would be some sort of horrific, holy something, Jesus something. And if you don't think that you are being programmed by the world and this stuff, then take a look at that. Take a look at your favourite TV show. Take a look at a film that you love and hear, really tune into, right, even do it as a silly drinking game, I don't care. E, every time you hear someone blaspheme or s swearing is just everywhere, swearing is just everywhere. But just let's get to the attack against God, a Hebrew God. No one says, oh, Buddha. Nobody says, oh, Muhammad. Nobody says anything like that. It's always God and it's, un it's across the world. Allow God to open your ears to that and start considering why 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 scripture tells us he is his power in the name of Jesus and he is the name above all names even the demons cower at his name um it is phenomenal I never I spend most of my life not believing any of this and it was an overnight just just everything changed um please join me tomorrow for mark 8 um, consider it again, just, you know, who is, G who is this guy? Why is he saying these amazing things? I think that we can all agree that we might have met somebody or, or even ourselves 
you know, have all the appearance of goodness, but in our, in our heads we're just sort of mumbling or muttering or saying something, or saying something through gritted teeth. Like, you know, <sighs> to do it all the time, I've got hundreds of examples of doing that. Jesus was saying this over 2,000 years ago. He said this, he knew this, he knows us before we were born, and he knows the, the human condition and the human mind. So just consider, if you don't know Jesus, if you don't know God, why we have these words. Why, do we, why does this exist? If man could have written the Bible. Hey Archie, say hello. If man could have, he would not, because it's too pure, it's too perfect. And if he could, he wouldn't. And if he would, if he would want to do it, he wouldn't be able to. If he could, he, he wouldn't. And if he would, he couldn't. It's too glorious. And it shows us uh, for who we are. Again, I'm just going to read that. What comes out of a man is what defiles a man. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. And, and again, Jesus isn't, you know, he's, when he talks in the Sermon on the Mount about um, even just having a murderous thought is committing murder. It's committing murder in our heart because it starts in our heart. Even if we don't steal something from our neighbour, but we kind of covet it, we, we want it, it's, it's icky and it's evil and, it, and it, it's not beautiful. I just think anyone has to agree with that. Everyone has to agree with that. So many people will just declare, oh, no, I'm a good person, or she's a good person, and people were saying that to me. Oh, Heather, but you're such a nice person. I wasn't a nice person. I mean, by my standards, by the world standards, maybe not really I mean I was quite critical and to say the least and rude um about people and would make fun of people just to just to get a laugh it's horrible um I didn't know any better and you won't know any better until you're able to understand who is this man why is he saying these things why is it important to me Guys, join, join me, join me, join me tomorrow for chapter eight. We're halfway through the book of Mark and it's coming up to um, what we currently um, celebrate, the, the week of Easter and what it's all really about. If it's, it's like considering that, that thing again, believing the most unbelievable thing. And the most unbelievable thing in this world, because we all know we will die. Although sometimes we forget about that and I find that really weird. Not that we should be worried about that constantly. But we're, the, the resurrection, the, the fact that somebody came, the fact that God came into his creation, died for us and taken away the sins of the world, past, present and future for us for eternity and we just keep coming to him and ask for forgiveness after we're saved for all oh, those other things, blah, 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 we can talk about that. But the most unbelievable thing, I think, that's the most simple thing and the most beautiful story in the world is that God came into his creation and um, died for us and was resurrected. If you don't believe in the resurrection, then you, there, is, there is no Christianity. If I don't believe in the resurrection, there is no Christianity. But I believe it. And I believed a lot of crazy things in my life. A lot of different things. And none of that, none of that holds true or has the proof or has all of this richment and, and nourishment. It's too beautiful. The truth is actually so, so beautiful. I don't think I've said that very clear. <laughs> but basically... Um, once, once God can release those scales from your eyes and open your ears 
soften your heart. You can really understand the majesty of, of what God has done for us and made a way for us. And it's not about keeping laws and it's not about being a good person. It's just understanding who he is. Join me tomorrow for another listen along, reading along chapter. I'm reading from the New King James. So if you want to bring your Bibles tomorrow, please do ask questions, send me any feedback, anything that you uh, want to know as well. I'm, I'm here and uh, can lead you best I can. So thanks for that and see you tomorrow. Bye for now.